So you want to read historical romance. That was cheesy. That was so cheesy. <laughs> And salutations, my dearest friends. My name is Samantha, and today we are going to be talking all about historical romance. I thought it would be really fun to do like a series on my channel where I just break historical romance down, give you guys some recommendations, just chat about all things romance. Imagine this to be kind of a series because I want to do historical romance for beginners. I also want to do recommendations for like specific tropes. So you will see many videos like this, but for this one, I am going to be breaking down the different eras of historical romance. So all of the time periods, what classifies as a historical romance, and also giving you some recommendations for the specific time period that I'm talking about. This video is going to be a lot more in depth than my normal videos, but keep in mind, I'm not a history teacher. I'm not a history expert. I just really like romance and I also find all of the history tidbits very very interesting. Well, if you guys have any additional facts or if maybe I misspoke please let me know in the comments down below. I tried really hard to do my research for this one so I hope you guys find this video interesting. I want this to be just an informational video so I'm going to be talking about the most popular historical romance time periods. I did skip over a few just maybe ones that weren't as popular but I will be giving book recommendations in this video for each specific time Time period. So if you're someone who really likes medieval Viking romances, I got you. If you're someone who likes Regency time period romances, I got you. I got you in this video. And this is also really great for people who are beginners to historic romance and you're like, I don't really know what the Regency time period is. Why do so many people talk about it? I got you. <laughs> I have like seven time periods to talk about. So let's just, let's just get started. So the very first one is the medieval time period. It takes place during the fifth to the late 15th century. This is also known as the middle ages. And for historical romances in this time period, you will see a lot of Viking romances and a lot of Highlander romances. Basically the fall of Imperial Rome and the early stages of modern Europe. Some people also call this the dark ages. Obviously this time period took place all over Europe and that continent but this for some reason in historical romance is centered really heavily in Scotland like a lot of Highland romances take place in Scotland and Ireland and yeah perfect book recommendation for this time period if you're looking to read more medieval romances is A Kingdom of Dreams by Judith McNaught it follows Royce who is the Duke of Claymore he's more like a warrior he ends up getting titled as a duke by the king but he's a very like rough and tough warrior. Our heroine Jennifer is very, very independent, very headstrong, and her family actually sends her to a nunnery. She neglected a proposal that would have benefited the family, so they sent her to a nunnery. I believe she is Scottish, but our hero is English, and their families are kind of like enemies. They definitely don't get along, and they are in war with each other, and our hero actually kidnaps her, so dun dun dun. <laughs> definitely an enemies to lovers romance, a little bit of a darker romance. They have a very strong chemistry with each other but they do fight for a lot of the books. So if you don't like enemies to lovers this probably isn't the book for you. The rest of this series takes place in like Regency London. This is kind of like the prequel to those other stories. But if you're looking for a medieval romance this one is a really good one. If you are a huge Highlander romance fan Karen Marie Moaning has an entire series. The one I'm holding is Kiss of the Highlander but this has a ton of books in that series and it all features Highlander romances. This specific book takes place in Scotland and it is during the 1518 so it definitely classifies under that time period. Like I said we're going to be skipping some time periods that are just not as popular in historical romances. If I'm missing any I know I might do a part two to this video. Briefly want to mention the Tudor time period that take place between 1485 and 1603. This was a very interesting time period. When I think of Tudors I think of obviously King Henry VIII and his infamous six wives. <laughs> Although during this time period there were five Tudor monarchs that kind of continued to rule. I know if you like the history of Henry VIII there is a tv show called The Tudors and it follows his story and all of his six wives. It's a very interesting series for sure. And there's also a musical called Six the Musical and it is a awesome, very modern retelling of Henry VIII. It is like a pop slash rock musical and it follows his six wives that are all singing and telling their version of the, what happened and their stories. The twist of female empowerment and it's a really, it's a it's an amazing musical. If you like TikTok and watch a lot of TikToks, you probably already know what this musical is because I feel like that always plays whenever I'm scrolling, but yeah, I definitely recommend that musical as well. 
I know Harley Quinn and Harley Quinn Presents has a lot like in this time period this book but I do believe it takes place in this time period. It is by Kathleen E. Widowes and it is so worthy my love. She's a very popular historical romance author and actually a lot of her books take place during this time period. When it describes Maxim our hero as proud and passionate the Marquis of Bradbury swore revenge on those who had stolen his title and lands and branded him a traitor to the crown. And our heroine Elise is beautiful and spirited and she found herself the innocent prisoner of the Marquess, her family's most hated foe. So that's what that story is, and it does take place during the time period. The author who I know is really popular is Susan Wiggs, and she has a series called The Tudor Rose, so it takes place during this time. I believe the first book is called At the King's Command. The hero is a nobleman who pisses off King Henry, and he ends up forcing him to marry this girl who was like trying to steal his horses. Definitely a forced marriage, marriage of convenience, enemies to lovers type of situation. So that one sounds really interesting. I'm very interested in reading the series. The reviews on Goodreads are very mixed. People either love it or hate it. So I don't know. Very interesting. Okay, so during the Tudor time period, we kind of go into the Elizabethan time period. It's named because of who was ruling, Queen Elizabeth, King Henry VIII's daughter. I think So Worthy, My Love, is like in between that time as well. Some of these recommendations I have read, some of them I haven't. I was just trying to like filter through to see what specifically fit during that time period. One that I found was A Woman of Passion by Virginia Henley. It's kind of interesting because it looks like it is actually loosely based on a true story. Obviously, it's not exact. The story she is friends with Queen Elizabeth herself and it follows all of her romances. It's very interesting because it looks like she has four love interests in the book and maybe even a couple of marriages. So definitely scandalous. The reviews again on Goodreads are kind of mixed but it does fit in this time period. Okay we are moving on to the 1700s. So we have the Georgian time period. This is between 1714 and 1830. This is a pretty popular time period in historical romance because it's right before the Regency time period. Actually the two kind of blend into each other. And it is named the Georgian time period because of the current ruler it was King George IV, I believe. There are a ton of historical romances in this time period. I actually really like this time period because it's very similar to the Regency time period. You get a lot of like London ballrooms, but not as oppressive, if that makes sense. It is definitely like a glamorous time period to read about in historic romance. I don't know how it really was. I thought that has a lot of romances in this time period. I do have her books, but it's on the bookshelf behind me and I don't feel like tearing up my bookshelf and that is Mary Below. She has an entire series that is set during this time. It's like someone to love, someone to wed. I've been pronouncing her last name wrong by the way. I feel like so many people have pronounced it different ways so I'm just gonna say Mary Below because that's what it looks like but feel free to correct me in the comments. Another very popular series that takes place during this time period is the Maiden Lane series by Elizabeth Hoyt. It's so funny because I feel like a lot of people say they only read Regency but it's like there are so many other books that technically don't fall under that time period. Another one that takes place during the Georgian time period is Eloisa James. Eloisa James has a ton of books right in this time period. How many times am I gonna say time period? Like come on Samantha. Clouds of Lindo Castle series takes place during the Georgian time period. It follows the family of the Duke of Lindo. The very first book in this series is Wild in Love. Everyone adores this book. I'm currently reading it on audio right now. And a lot of people have asked like what to read after watching the Bridgerton series or reading the Bridgerton books. And this is definitely a series that I feel is very comparable just because it follows a family. It has a lot of family dynamics, definitely takes place in London, has Bridgerton type of vibes. But yeah, this takes place during the Georgian time period. Next up is everybody's favorite time period. Okay, I don't wanna say everybody's, but I feel like this is the most popular when people start to read historical romance thinking about the Regency time period. The Regency time period is very very interesting. I actually did a video where I did Regency inspired makeup. Everyone was like hyping up the Bridgerton books so I have a video where I gave you guys facts about like what type of makeup they wore during that time period. I also give you a little history tidbit so I will link that video down below if you're interested. Regency time period is actually a subgenre of the Georgian time period so that's why you will find a lot of the books to overlap. Very short though, it only takes place between 1811 to 1820, which is so funny that this is like the most popular when it comes to historical romances because it was a very short period of time. In this time, the current king, King George IV, ended up falling very ill. He wasn't able to make decisions and be a good ruler. So his son, also named George, he was the prince regent at the time and he ended up ruling in his father's place 
as he was still alive. That is why it's called the Regency time period because the Prince Regent George was ruling in his father's place. I think of Regency, I think of London, I think of ballrooms, I think of titles. So we have dukes and earls and viscounts. It's going to be a part two to this video where I'm going to be breaking down historical romance terminology and also what all of those titles mean and basically like what did they do for a living. That's in my next video. Marriage Mart was very popular. Everything was about appearance and marrying people with titles. Historical romance in particular, it feels very glamorous. It's the very definition to me of an escapism read because they're walking along the promenade and they're dancing at balls and they have like marriage of conveniences and very easily girls are ruined. This is a very loved time period and I can definitely see why. So we have so many books, <laughs> so many books that take place during this time period. Like where do I even begin? I already mentioned it. Let's go ahead and talk about it. The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. This is the first book in the Bridgerton series. This takes place during that time and is definitely Regency ballroom glitz and glam London to me. They're actually a little after the Regency time period but I still lump them in the same era because it definitely has that feel of like London ballrooms. So we have the Wallflower series by Lisa Kleypas. The first book is It Happened One Autumn. This follows a group of four girls who are all considered wallflowers. None of them have gotten married. Decide to band together and make this like girl gang that is just so amazing to read about and they all decide they're, they're going to help each other find husbands and each book follows their story. The first book is Lillian and Marcus's story. It's an enemies to lovers romance and it definitely is like an opposites attract type of book. Their chemistry is amazing. I love this book. The Wallflower series actually leads into the Hathaway series by Lisa Kleypas. This is Mine Till Midnight, one of my favorite books of all time. Cameron, our hero, is just absolutely amazing. I feel like this would make the best Netflix adaption. It follows the entire Hathaway family. So if you like family dynamics and you like growing with characters this is a great book. The first book follows the older sister Amelia who is responsible for her siblings because both of her parents have passed away and they have inherited this property and this title that they know absolutely nothing to do with. And then Cameron is kind of the opposite. He is definitely not a part of polite society but he ends up helping Amelia take care of her family and kind of find her place in London. I just really loved their relationship. Cameron was a little bit of like a cinnamon roll hero. Loved the way he took care of her. Loved the way that Amelia cared for her family. And it was just a really great book. Another one that takes place during the Regency time period is Nine Rules to Break When Romancing a Rake by Sarah McLean loved this book. I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This also follows a family. It is three books. The third book is my favorite. I ended up giving that book five stars. The first book follows our main character Lady Calpurnia who her entire life she has always done the right thing. She has been the epitome of a good English lady but she is pretty sick and tired of it and definitely has noticed that men are more free and they're able to do more things so she ends up creating a list of all the things that she wants to do that she can do and men can and she just like makes makes it a bucket list and starts checking all of those things off. So is the Marquess of Ralston and he ends up fighting about her list and helping her and it follows their romance and stop her from doing any of the things on her list and they just really meshed well together. The second book follows his brother and then the third book follows their sister. So loved it so much. Sedera is another popular author that writes in this time period. This one is the Duchess deal. I'll show you the step back for this one. That's what it looks like. Little Rogue by Johanna Lindsay. I think that also takes place during this time period. That is part of the Mallory series. I literally could go on and on and on. So many recommendations for this time period. It is definitely, in my opinion, one of the most popular eras for historical romance. So we're moving on to the Gilded Age. This is also called and ties into, and I can't pronounce this next word, Ed Edwardian? Edwardian? Edwardian era. Called that because the king during that time was Edward the Seventh. Takes place between 1860 and the early 1900s. We're finally moving in to the American romances. So we're getting the heck out of London in this era. This is the complete opposite of the Regency time period. Regency is very prim and proper and titles where Gilded Age is more American romances, more self-made men. During this time period, America became much more prosperous and saw a growth in both industry industry and technology. A lot of people were going to America to become self-made men, to make more money. It was also kind of the fall of noblemen and polite society. Titles really didn't matter as much. If you could make some money, you were somebody. <laughs> a very popular author that writes during this time period is Joanna Shoup. Her Uptown Girl series takes place during the Gilded Age. The book in that series is The Rogue of Fifth Avenue. The second book in that series is probably the most popular and what I hear get the most hype on booktube and that is the 
Prince of Broadway. This follows our hero Clayton who is a casino owner and he kind of wants to enact revenge on a very prestigious family which is how he ends up stumbling across our heroine Florence. Prince knows that he is using her to get at her family but she is also using him because she wants to open up her own gambling hell specifically for women. The romance in our heroine is very independent, very strong-willed. A lot of people love this book. All right, we are kind of staying in America with the colonial time period and all of the Western romances. There are romances that take place during the civil rights movement and the civil war. So a lot of historicals that take place during this time and I feel like this is the second most popular time period. Like Westerns are very, very popular, especially in the 90s. There was always a Western historical romance. I think of American historical romances, I gotta give it to my girl. Beverly Jenkins. I just, she's perfect. Okay. Romances are absolutely beautifully written with the most swoon worthy heroes. Her books are filled with culture and history. They will make you laugh. They will make you cry. They will make you swoon. Like just read Beverly Jenkins. The one I'm holding is Night Song. I gave this book five stars. It is absolutely one of my favorites. It follows our heroine Kara who is a school teacher and it follows her romance with a soldier. I could literally recommend every Beverly Jenkins for this time. One is Forbidden. This is part of her Old West series. This time period I feel like we get a lot more independent heroines as well. I absolutely loved our heroine in this book. She has dreams of opening her own restaurant so she is traveling to California but on her travels she ends up getting stranded in the desert and that's how she meets our hero. Our hero nurses her back to health and it follows their romance. The romance is forbidden obviously you can tell by the title. The reason it is forbidden is because our heroine is a woman of color and then our hero is passing as white. So he does have African descent but he is light-skinned society he passes for white and a lot of people think that he is a white man and he gets a lot of privilege from that so their romance is forbidden this book this book is chef's kiss everything I want in a romance five stars okay so we also have westerns those are really popular historic romances I'm gonna be completely honest westerns are not really in my wheelhouse I'm definitely not very knowledgeable for that subgenre I feel like they're really popular in the 90s when I think of westerns I think of Johanna Lindsay or Lorraine Heath absolutely nothing wrong with this genre I just need to read more of it there's a lot of like cowboy romances some that come to mind is Brave the Wild by Johanna Lindsay there's also Never Love a Cowboy by Lorraine Heath. Westerns can absolutely be a good time. I mean, who doesn't love a cowboy? Okay, so I tried to breeze through all of those time periods. Again, I probably skipped some. I probably could have given more recommendations. So if you want to see specific videos on each time period and recommendations for them, I would love to do that. I would love to continue the series. I am filming videos every day leading up to Valentine's Day. Stay tuned for my next upload because it's going to be part two to the series where I break down all of the historical romance terminology. So if you like dukes and earls and wallflowers, but you don't really know what that means and you want to know more, stay tuned for the next episode. Episode? Is this a TV series? Why not? Stay tuned for my next upload. And until then, thank you so, so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. It means the absolute world to me, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!